Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel and thank you so much for joining me again. As many of you know, I'm a huge proponent of journaling. I think it's really good for us to get our feelings out, to not lug them around, whether you see a counselor or you, you know have a therapist or you don't. I think that journaling is a really good practice. It's just a nice release. It frees your mind. It frees all the thoughts that are kind of bouncing around in there. I kind of like to look back on my journaling from time to time. Uh, <laughs> uh, when I used to, uh, back in the day, and I'd look back on it, a, a lot of bad feelings would surface. It would upset me. I'd be crying. It was, um, it was a very bad experience to look back on my journaling. And now when I look back, uh, if I don't look back too far, <laughs> I can look back on more pleasant memories and I can look on my progression of healing and the good things that I have in my life now. And it brings me a sense of gratitude. Journaling is just a good measure of where you are in your life and taking a look at your goals. And I just feel that it's a nice, healthy practice. It's actually how uh, my book started. <laughs> it was all just journaling and until things got really serious and the journaling turned into chapters. In turn, my it, it turned into my memoir. As I said in my last video, it was very cathartic. It was a great thing for me. Not only do I journal what's going on in my feelings, I do it to kind of clear things up. It's kind of, it's almost like, I don't want to say taking out the trash because it's not bad stuff. It's kind of like taking the recycling out. It's like, whew, okay, that's outside now. It's in the bin. It's, it's ready to go. It's staged. And it's just a little weight off of your shoulders. So journaling is a great thing. I use, it's an app. I don't know if, it, I, I don't think I can access it from my phone, but I have it on my iPad Pro. It's called Day One. I love it. Keep track of everything. It uh, prompts you when you have a journal entry from the same day, you know, a year ago, two years ago, whatever the case may be. Not only do I journal my thoughts and feelings, I also journal my dreams <laughs> and uh, they're not quite so upsetting and vivid as of late and I'm sleeping much better than I have in the past. Um, I would say 80% of the time I sleep like a baby and it's awesome and I feel rested and it makes me feel healthy and our sleep is so important. I talk about that a lot because it was a really big problem for me and now it's not so much. Now I tend to lose sleep when I'm excited and I have things going on, projects on my burners and the the creative side of my brain. I don't know, is that your right side or your left side? I don't even know. It wakes me up and it keeps me awake until I do something with it. I would journal my dreams and one popped up in my memories uh, a couple weeks ago. And if any of you have any insight to uh, dream analysis, please bestow some knowledge on me on this one. I'm going to go ahead and share it if I haven't already. I probably did in the past when it actually happened because it was so unsettling. I dreamt that I was chewing on broken glass. Yeah, and I believe I had that dream more than once, so that was disturbing. Day one will store all these things for you, memories and pictures, journal entries. It will prompt you if you feel like you're stuck and you kind of don't know what to write about, which isn't a problem for me. And a prompt came up the other day and it said, do you ever feel guilty? And I was floored when I read that because the first thing I thought was, no, <laughs> no, I don't feel guilty. And it caused me to just kind of like rewind. And I realized that when I was with the narcissist and, and back in those days, I felt guilty all of the time. If I was at work, I felt guilty about not being with my family. If I was with my family, I felt guilty about not being at work. I felt guilty if, you know, the house needed to be clean. I felt guilty if I didn't clean it myself. And, you know, I mean, it just, it was just constant negative feelings that plagued me. It was just constant negativity and feelings of heaviness and worry just of not being enough. Guilt mixed all into that. I thought to myself, not only do I not feel guilty, I feel happy all the time. <laughs> Reading that and realizing that guilt is something I no longer deal with just prompted me to realize that all in all, feelings of negativity don't follow me around. They don't plague me. They don't weigh on me the way they used to. It was like those, all those negative feelings, lugging them around every day and, and having them with me every day was like putting on clothes. It, it just went with the territory of being with a narcissist. Now, I just don't feel that way. When you go no contact and you no longer have that narcissist in your life and you put up boundaries and you don't allow toxic people in your space, everything changes. It's such a dramatic, drastic, wonderful change. You don't really know it until you actually experience it. And it's, it's so hard to even describe because it's not like anything you've ever experienced. 
if you were in a relationship with a narcissist. Reading that brought up all these feelings and brought up all these thoughts and it also caused me to stop and realize how incredibly grateful I am to have the life that I now have once again to just be grateful that I'm not a narcissist. I mean that sounds crazy. It's like thank you God I'm not a narcissist. I mean seriously when you think about the feelings that you had towards those people and towards the way they've treated you or the things that they've done to you, I feel like the gratitude that I have that I wasn't pegged to be a narcissist, that that's not my lot in life, my gratitude by far outweighs all of those feelings. And I don't put too much into them anyway and, to, and into those types of feelings because the less I think about all of the toxic people that used to be in my life, the better. So it just caused me to pause and think about these feelings and think about how I don't feel guilt and, and negative emotions the way I used to. They were a constant, they, you know, it was like putting on pants. It, it was just a given that every day I was going to be plagued with something negative and heavy and difficult to deal with. And my life is nothing like that anymore. And I'm incredibly grateful I, I'm so incredibly blessed. I hope that um, in sharing this and shedding light on narcissism and the abuse and how to get out and what you can do to free yourself of it will, will hopefully help others to feel this way and to free themselves of the negative feelings and negative thoughts and negative people. It occurred to me that when you're with them, you're not your true self when you're with a narcissist. And I've said this before and I'll say it again, you are not who you are meant to be when you are with a narcissist. You are this person that they have molded and brainwashed and trained to, to be what and who they want the way they need it when they need it. You don't even know what you're capable of. You don't even know all the good that's inside of you, the wisdom and the creativity that you have, the love that you have to give while you're with them. It's not until you're away from them that all of this sort of starts to pour out of you. When you're away from toxic people, it frees up your mind, it frees up your thoughts, it frees up your creativity. So that's why I'm always trying to impress upon everyone. If you're in this, you've got to get out. The sooner the better. It's, it's just never too late. I was this wound up, uptight, abrasive, mean, moody, <laughs> biatch when I was with my ex, when I was with the narcissist. And now I'm like this completely different person. I'm all soft and round edges and my writing's all loopy. And I mean, just every single thing has changed. Everything. Literally everything about me has changed and I'm happier and I'm a better person and I'm better to other people and I'm better to myself. We don't think of ourselves when we're with them. You know, we, we put ourselves in, in the back seat. Everybody else takes the front seat. So that all changes when you're away from a narcissist. So I thought I would share this and I thought I would shed a little bit of light on, um, well, starting out with the journaling and then that prompt that made me stop and think about all of these things that I felt compelled to share with all of you. Once again, I hope this helps. That's it for today. Ciao for now, everybody. Thank you so much for tuning in again. I'll see you next time.